Hi, so welcome back to Byte Forever. This is a ZX81 assembler program video. Um, I'll say from the outset, I've done a few assembly programmings. My, uh, you might have seen previous videos like the ZX81 racing game port from ZX Spectrum and the Asteroids game as well. Um, but um, I'm by no means an expert and I'm kind of learning this as going along to some extent. Um, I've been interested in Z80 assembly code for a while, but um, I've only done little bits. Um, and I think that's that's kind of the normal way that you learn things. You can, it's, it's good to sort of try and find stuff, examples on the internet, wherever you can get the examples from, old magazines from the 80s even, there's a lot of stuff on archive.org um, with typing programs, uh, whatever it is, wherever you can get the information. Loads of books as well on archive.org, uh, assembly program books for Z80, ZX81, ZX Spectrum. Wherever it is, you can get some examples, uh, especially ones that have got the ability to show you how to actually compile, uh, well, assemble it and run it. Um, they're the best. Um, so that being said, what I was trying to do here is try and create uh, a 1K program that'll, that'll run just on an unexpanded ZX81, so you don't need a RAM pack. Um, and now there's, there's lots of people out there who've done massively more complicated programs in 1K, games, all sorts, even high-res graphics. Uh, you can see some examples of that. Um, which I don't think we had in the 80s, but people have done since. They've worked out to do sort of pseudo high-res graphics. And they're really, really good and way beyond my understanding um, at the moment, anyway. Um, so, yeah, this this program just prints out a bit of text at the top. So, um, ZX81 1K and prints that out. And then just print a checkerboard, similar to like a chessboard, uh, in these loops. Um, so I'm using some ROM routines. These are defined in a file called um, uh, zx81sys.asm. Um, actually, no, they're not. They're in x81 rom.asm so these are just the addresses of these routines so all, all these zx81 files and screen originally came from a post on sinclair zxworld.com so i've got a link in the code there you can click on that look at that. i think there's a zip file somewhere in there a link to download these um include files um so Basically, that's like a framework to use. That's that's really all that is. You could do all of this without that and just put in raw memory addresses or create your own even. Um, but I just find it a really easy way to kind of structure uh, these assembly programs. Um, and it also seems that the assembly is loaded as a, a basic line. So it actually, one of the features of the ZX basic, I think on Spectrum and on the ZX81, um, you can uh, type in machine code directly into basic as the first line. Um, that's quite a cool feature actually. And all the characters, are, all this is mentioned in the instruction manuals, uh, what the different um, ZX, so what the different Z80 machine code operations are, are um, mapped onto in terms of characters um so yeah so this this is just a really simple program just print some text as a couple of loops one's an even loop an odd loop if you like uh to print out a checkerboard so compiled this using build.bat this batch file uh, creates a chessboard.p so the main file actually as you see as you've seen chessboard.asm this is the output, this chessboard.p, which can be run in an emulator, or you can convert it to a WAV file, run it on a real 1K ZX81. So just compile or assemble that. 
Uh, eventually, uh, the batch file calls um, the uh, TASM assembler. Just close that now, you can see. So, yeah, it's all it's done. Let's print some text, set x 11 k put the chessboard on the screen. Um, so, just to explain a bit of how I've set the screen up to save memory, that's all in this file called screen.asm. Just showing that. That's included at the end of this file. So, the way this works is you've got um, the the TASM assembler is actually assembling this into like a basic program it puts on the first line and these surrounding things like line one of the program. Um, there's also uh, a line two, a line two, which is effectively the thing that calls the assembler code to run it, um, the randomized instruction. And then you've got after that screen.asm and then end basic. So in, in memory, I don't know if I could just show, um, a picture of that from the instruction manual. So I've just got the uh, ZX81 instruction manual. That's just this. Uh, it's actually the thing that comes with a computer. Um, well, it came with a computer when it was bought, and you can get this on archive.org. I'll try and put a link in the description. So um, this is chapter 27. The organization of memory. So you see here, you, um, you got system variables, program, and D file, which is the display. That's the screen memory. And then loads of other stuff at the end. Um, it doesn't give you any numbers directly, uh, apart from 16384, which is the start. The rest of these are actually, and then 16509. That's where the basic program starts. The rest of these are subject to uh, moving as the program grows. Um, but the way we set this up now in screen.asm, which is actually, so this is display, we've got um, an on, uh, so this is a collapsed version of the uh, display. So, um, so the documentation elsewhere mentions that you've got this CHR string 118. So this is the start. So this is in hex 76. So that decimal 118 is 76. So the way the ZX81 display works is you've got... Uh, sorry, you can actually see some of that. Hopefully you can. Uh, I'll turn the light off so it's better contrast. So you've... I'm defining, rather than 32 characters wide, I'm just defining 9, um, and I'm also not defining full screen, I'm just defining um, 9 rows, and start of each uh, row you get this um, hex 76, and that's just the way that, uh, so the ZX81 itself will interpret that as the start of a line. Um, and these are just all zeroed. If you were to define the full thing, then that would uh, no doubt blow the amount of memory we've got available. Um, so, yeah, that's the way I've defined the screen. And if you notice when I ran it, that's the only part of the screen I'm using. Um, a lot of the other, if, I don't know if you've seen the previous video, of the racing game which scrolls the screen. So in that, I, uh, the whole screen was defined, uh, and you could use, and there's an instruction called LDDR, which um, combined with some register setup, it will scroll all the memory uh, down, um, and that that was like a really quick shortcut. That's one of the reasons that game runs quite fast. Uh, but here we can't use that; we'd have to do something else. We wanted to scroll this around. And we've also just limited to quite a small uh, screen area. Uh, you could probably, I'm not sure, I haven't tried expanding it uh, fully downwards or as far as I can. Um, it might be we could make like a Tetris game or something, that might be quite good. If you could do sort of full column only, even if it's only that you know, limited width, you could still possibly do a Tetris game. Um, 
So yeah, I'll put a link to this code on GitHub. Um, uh, it's quite straightforward. I'll try and put some comments in as well. Um, after you've printed the title screen, we're just going into a loop. As I say, it calls the print app root, uh, wrong routine. That just sets the current cursor position and it's doing it from nine. You could just do LD, you could just load E with nine, but I just kind of loaded D with zero nine. So at one point this was crashing, I wasn't sure if it was some other effect or some other, um, uh, something else being uninitialized in D. But um, so it just sets, Fatal would just say register DE is a combination of register D and E uh, to create a 16 bit value, but I'm just putting 9 into effectively into E. And then it's it's um, decrementing, so it's setting the cursor position, um, working out if it's an odd or an even row, uh, and then it loads 4 into BC. So it's, if in each of these inner loops, it's actually um, printing two characters at once, so the grey and then the black, um, and then after after you've done a row, it goes to the outer loop control, gets the value of uh, D back, uh, decrements it, so we're drawing, we're actually drawing from the bottom upwards. As I say, I'll put this uh, link to this code to the GitHub, um, so anyone can sort of run it and try and modify a bit just to see how this 1K program works. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Bye for now.